Welcome to Sean Can't Cook, But John Can. Sean and I have been actors for many years, but I assure you, this is no act. He really can't cook. I'm going to teach Sean and you at home how to feel more comfortable in the kitchen, preparing tasty recipes that even the most novice of cooks can create. I will show you step by step how to construct each dish so that when your friends come over, they'll ask, how'd you learn how to make that? If you already know how to cook, I hope you'll find a few recipes to add to your repertoire. Let's see what's on today's menu. Hello, and welcome to season two, episode one. That's right, we made it to season we two did. of Sean Can't Cook, But John Can. I really can't. We're not even going to go there. <laughs> anyway, so our dear friend Nancy sent us hats and new aprons, so we have a new look today. So you thank you. You look pretty great. Well, you do too, okay. Chef Sean. Get a little <laughs> schmutz there. Oh, uh, thank you, Nancy, for these. We love them. They're great. Uh, little pockets in them, so I don't have anything in mine, but, you know, someday we might. I, oh, I do have something on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, today, we are going to make chicken teriyaki. Mm. Now, I love it. I know you love it. I've been to many restaurants and he's ordered it. I ordered it myself. And you can buy a bottle of Teriyaki sauce, marinate some chicken, tofu, pork, whatever you want. Today we're going to do chicken breasts. Uh, but I decided I want to make my own because I can control what goes in it. So let's get the Sean Cam going and show you exactly what goes into this sauce. The ingredients that you will need for the teriyaki sauce are one cup of low sodium soy sauce, one-fourth of a cup of a light oil, I'm using canola. One-fourth of a cup of water. Three tablespoons of granulated sugar and three tablespoons of light brown sugar. One tablespoon of freshly grated ginger root. And four to five cloves of garlic, depending on your preference, that have been run through a garlic press. Just so you know, we'll get into this a little bit later, this is what fresh ginger root looks like. If you don't want to use fresh, you can use a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and a half teaspoon of ground ginger powder. One teaspoon of rice vinegar. And this is one and a half teaspoons of cornstarch dissolved in one tablespoon of water. That's to thicken half of this, which we'll explain later. The equipment that you will need to make all of this, if you're going to use the fresh ginger, you'll need a vegetable peeler to peel the skin, and a grater to grate that. A small to medium sauce pot, because we're going to cook the sauce for about four to five minutes along with a spoon. We're going to reserve about a cup for marinade and the rest will turn into a glaze so we need to measure that out. Some container, I prefer something flat. We're doing chicken breasts today so they can lay flat to marinate them. You can use any kind of bowl, whatever you have. This one's nice because it has a lid. If you don't have that you can cover it with aluminum foil or plastic wrap. I like to use an instant read thermometer. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we cook it. You'll need some forks and tongs. These are actually ice tongs, but they work great to turn chicken or pork or tofu, whichever protein you're using. And that's it. Let's get started. So to get started, Sean is going to mix all the ingredients and I'm going to talk to you about ginger and garlic for a little bit. So you can start putting all these ingredients together. Start with the liquid and then do the sugars and then lastly the ginger and that. I would do the soy sauce first so it doesn't splash everywhere. Okay. Although, thank you, Nancy, we have new aprons to protect <laughs> our white shirts. So this is all going to get combined in the sauce pot. No need to use a bowl because we're going to put this on the stove just for a few minutes. I like to cook it for about three to four minutes at a low simmer just to dissolve the sugars, let everything melt together. So if you've never worked with fresh ginger root, it's very simple. Vegetable peeler comes in very handy. And see, it's very simple. You can just peel that off. And you've never done this, have you? Uh, yeah, I have, actually. You have? Mm -hmm. 
where and when and how. I don't know, but it's a lot easier than, oh. um, it looks like it's not going to be easy because <laughs> the outside's so rough, right, but it actually right. feels really well. Right, it does. Now you will come across these little nubs here. Now if the vegetable peeler has a flexible blade like that, it'll sort of go around that. You can also cut those off to make it smoother. So I'm making a big mess on the table, but that's okay. Well, they wouldn't do that, but you know, <laughs> for today's purposes. So, um, you just want to grate it. This is a grater. Now, if you watched our orange cookie recipe, and I'm sure you did, uh, the I used a microplane that was much smaller. This is a small grater, so you want a little bit bigger chunk. So it's very easy. It just grates across. It's very fibrous, as you can see. And that's it. It'll be on the bottom. You'll scrape it into the bowl. And you want a tablespoon of this for this. I prefer to use the fresh, but if you decide to make teriyaki sauce some night, and oh, I don't have my fresh ginger, oh, I don't have my fresh garlic, you can use the powdered. I did this, what, last night? Mm -hmm. And yeah. you were like, oh, this is not bad. Yeah. It, it, it really doesn't taste a whole lot different. This has a little bit fresher taste to it, but a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, not garlic salt, garlic powder, and a half a teaspoon of ginger powder. And about the soy sauce, I only, only use low sodium soy sauce. I find that the other stuff is just way too salty. So that's it. You've got to blend it. So we're going to cook this for a few minutes on the stove. And oh, what I'm going to do, I don't know where my measuring cup is, but I'm going to measure out a cup of it to use as a marinade. And then we're going to thicken the rest of it to use as a glaze, like a dipping sauce. So that's it. Pretty simple, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. If he can do it, you can do it. I'm in it. That should be our slogan. If he can do it, you can do it. So we're going to clean this up, go to the stove, and show you what it looks like on the stove. This has been cooking for about four minutes to dissolve the sugars. As you see, it's at a very low simmer. And that's it. Stir every so often to make sure it doesn't stick on the bottom. And that's good. We can turn the heat off and we'll go to the next step. I reserved a little less than a cup of this. Now, I want to get this in the refrigerator now, so I added a few ice cubes to cool it down. Otherwise, you could just let it sit until it gets to room temperature before you put it on top of your protein. The sauce that's left is still bubbling away. We're going to turn it up just a little bit. And what we're going to do is stir in, good thing I'm a little ambidextrous, stir in the cornstarch that's been dissolved in the water. And go back to my normal right hand. We can turn the heat up a little bit. And we want this to thicken for about a minute or two. So we'll come back and show you what that looks like. This has been cooking for about one minute, and as you can see, it's thickened up into a nice little glaze. This will make a delicious dipping sauce for whatever protein you're cooking after it's done and marinated in the marinade. So take this off the heat and let it cool completely. You can put it in the refrigerator, and it will thicken up a little bit more as it cools in the refrigerator. And that's it. This is the cup of marinade that I set aside and it is cooled to room temperature. Today I'm using thin cut chicken breasts. I got these in the grocery store. They're already pre-cut in half. If you want, you can use chicken thighs or you can buy chicken breasts that are whole, boneless, and cut them in half lengthwise. Now you can also use bone-in chicken if you want. Again, you can use tofu. This would be good on salmon, whatever you choose. This is what I'm choosing to use today. So, we're simply going to very elegantly dump it on top. This is a little bit much. This would actually be good enough for eight chicken breasts. That's what I did the first time and used two different containers. But since I made this for the show, we're just going to throw this in there as is. And what I like to do is just stab the chicken breasts a little bit. It'll help the marinade penetrate. You don't have to do it a lot. Chicken is already pretty tender, so again, just a few stabs, and there's a lot of marinade in this. Normally, if there's not as much, you can pour it on top and then turn them over, which we can do that also. 
just flip them, stab them on the other side a couple times, and that's it. We're going to cover these, let them sit at least one hour. I actually like about four hours. Today I've decided to use my cast iron griddle to cook the chicken on. I'm using the flat side. I tried the grooved side, but the sugars in the sauce stuck so badly it took forever to clean up. This is a much easier cleanup situation. It's been preheating for about 10 minutes. You can use a regular fry pan if you would like. You can also bake them in the oven if you would like. I would not use a non-stick pan. They don't generate enough caramelization. The way to test a cast iron skillet is simply to splash a little bit of water on it. And you can hear a nice sizzle. So we're going to throw these on. And you hear a nice sizzle from that. That's great. Wow, that is a lot louder than I expected. Oh, uh, Sean's going to talk to us from yeah, behind the camera. Hot. Yay. Yes, this is what you want. This will develop a nice crust. Good Lord. A real restaurant back here. Oh, and I also put down a little bit of oil. I use grapeseed oil because it has a very high smoking point. So we're going to let these go for about four minutes before flipping them, and we're back to show you what those look like. These have been cooking for four minutes, so we're going to turn them over. I've discarded the marinade. Do not reuse that. Once the raw chicken has been in it, you do not want to reuse that. That's why we made the separate glaze. Also, I've gotten rid of the fork and I'm switching to these tongs, our little ice tongs. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's got the nice color on it. If I could just grab it. Oh, man, look at the char on it. Yep. It's really good. So we're going to let these cook for about three minutes on this side and we'll come back and check them. These have been cooking for about nine minutes. As you can see, I'm looking for 165 degrees, so this is right on. I've switched to clean tongs from the other ones. You don't want to cross-contaminate. So now that these are done, let's plate and serve. Smells like chicken teriyaki to me. It's amazing. How about you? So we put a little glaze on the top. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, these have been resting for about 10 minutes, which is always good for any kind of chicken, pork, beef, to let it rest, to redistribute the juices. Ground meat, not so much, but a whole piece of meat like this it redistributes it. By the way, the thermometer is really to tell you when it's done. For myself, I used to always overcook meat, which is good because at least you're not going to get sick from it. It's, <laughs> it but it would be dry sometimes. I use a thermometer to tell me really so that I don't overcook it when it's done. So that's why I use it. You don't have to use it, but it's kind of a safety feature. The USDA has a website that will tell you all the temperatures for various meats. Um, just look on their website. It's very handy. So are we ready to have yeah, some let's do chicken it. teriyaki? Any particular one you want? Doesn't matter. Let's do it. Okay. So I put it on top of some rice. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, I happen to like rice. We both love rice. So the fork would let go. Um, dig in. All right. Help yourself. I'm going to try this first. Yes. It's our dinner. It's our dinner. <laughs> we had it last night. We had it tonight. <laughs> ah, the joys. Mmm. Mmm. It's really good. It's moist. It's not mm -hmm. overcooked. Mm -hmm. The cast iron skillet gives it a nice mm -hmm. crust to it without overcooking it. It's not dry. Um, the teriyaki sauce is not overly salty. Mm -mm. The low sodium, I can't stress that enough, it's all I ever use in any recipe is low sodium soy sauce. No additional salt is needed. There's some garlic, there's some ginger. You can put sesame seeds in this if you want. I would toast them in a fry pan for a few minutes first to get them a little bit golden. Um, we don't care for them as far as like they get stuck in your teeth. We well, want to film that smile, you know, and here's a mouthful of sesame Is this seeds. with the fresh ginger? Yes, this is fresh ginger, fresh garlic, um, so that, um, the other one was good, but if you don't, if you don't have fresh on hand, it works in a pinch to use the dried, but I prefer the fresh. It has a little bit a more vibrant taste from the fresh ginger. Um, so that's it. This is our chicken teriyaki. 
We hope you enjoy it. If you try it at home, I know we're going to enjoy this as soon as the camera stops rolling. Thank you again for tuning in to Season 2, Episode 1. He helped make this. You can make this at home. We'll be back next week for another tasty episode. Thanks for joining us. Time to dig in. Yeah, I forgot my water. <laughs> we'll get some. <something. laughs>